welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're doing my December wrap-up. I am finally getting around to doing this wrap-up. It's going to be extremely late. I'm so sorry about that. Just with all the end of the year videos that I wanted to do, I put out quite a bit of content recently. I was also trying to finish up some books all the way up until December 31st, so I couldn't film it a little bit earlier than I wanted to, but <laughs> I'm finally here and I'm ready to talk about the books I read in December. I only physically read two books, so I've decided that if I physically read or listen to less than three books, I'm not going to do a separate physical and audiobook video because that video would be super, super short. So I'm just, for this video, combining them all and hopefully 2020 will be a much better reading year and we'll have separate videos because I'll have read so many glorious books. So far, going a lot better. Not as good as like past years, but a lot better than last year. So first up, we're gonna talk about the books that I physically read. So I actually read two books for Tis the Seasonathon. I will link that vlog up in the cards if you guys want to watch it. It was a Christmas slash holiday themed readathon that I participated in, run by Heather over at Bookables. This is one of my favorite readathons to do every year because I spend the majority of December reading pretty much only Christmas and holiday and wintery themed books. That being said, that's all of this wrap up consists of. So if you're not interested in that, you might want to skip this video. But the first book that I read for that readathon and for the month was Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz. I had kind of a funny situation with this book. I always thought this cover was really appealing. So this is an adult holiday romance set in modern times but a twist on like Pride and Prejudice in a way. I thought that sounded great. I've read other things by Melissa De La Cruz. She's kind of one of those authors that just pumps out books. Like she just writes so many books all the time, which isn't the best, but can be like really fun, like just fun and easy reads. I've enjoyed like her Frozen series and I think one other series from her. This one I hated. <laughs> it was almost my least favorite book of the year. It was so bad. This book is only like 200 pages and very short. So compared to other books, this is like way smaller. So this should have took me no time to read and it took me like five days. It was terrible. So much happened, like there was so much insta-love that was not justified and not fun. There was so many irrational moments. Like we have like a cross between like a kooky independent main character that's also kind of just like fly by the seat of her pants and you're supposed to be like, she's supposed to be like lovable and she is not. She's neurotic and psycho. <laughs> so. I just thought this was insane. I thought even the subplots that had romance involved were crazy and the things that were happening and what wound up happening. I literally had whiplash from this book. So I wound up giving it two stars. Probably should have given it one, but yeah, that's how I felt about this one. Then thankfully I picked up 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. And just because this is the newest like young adult holiday romance that has come out in a while and it was also the group book for the readathon. I had to get this one from the library, so that's why it's kind of shiny. So this is about a girl who has to stay home with her giant family living at her grandmother's house, and she's kind of spending the time there. It goes through a breakup right at the beginning of like the Christmas season, and her entire family, her aunts and uncles and everything, decide to set up this whole game of setting her up on 10 blind dates, and they all pick different activities and different guys that she's never met, and so you're basically just following that. But this isn't just about romance, you're getting a lot of family aspects, so aunts and uncles and cousins and moms and dads. You've got a nice little relationship with her sister in here who is pregnant and kind of having like a rough pregnancy. And you get like old friendships and kind of mending wounds and oh, this was so good. And this was exactly what I wanted for Christmas, it's just like cheesy, delightful, happy, wonderfulness. I am very picky with my contemporaries and this was absolutely awesome and it was also extremely festive which I loved. A lot of the dates were super super winter themed and very Christmassy themed like she was in a nativity for one of them so that was really great. Exactly what I needed after Pride Prejudice and Mistletoe which was a complete disaster. One of my favorite reads of the year actually so I gave this one four stars. And on audiobook I actually did a lot of rereads just like we do with like holiday movies and holiday music. I like to also reread read books that I loved that are also festive and holiday themed and I like to do that via audiobook one because I haven't experienced it that way so you get a little bit of a different experience and also just it's a quick and easy way to do it I personally am able to listen to more audiobooks than I am to physically read because I like work from home and I can multitask and stuff. So the first one I picked up was Let It Snow by Maureen Johnson, John Green, and Lauren Miracle. I read this one two years ago physically and 
and I gave it like a 3.5 star then. These are three separate holiday romances that kind of inter interconnect and they interconnect like all together at the end. So they're all set in like the same town on the same day over the course of one day and they all are revolving around like this snowstorm that happens in this town and they're like different types of romance. So I actually enjoyed this one a lot more via audiobook than I did physically reading it. There are some weird things that happen <laughs> in here like there is a lot of hate on cheerleaders and I think it's supposed to be kind of like funny but it just comes off kind of strange and odd. I do not like John Green's story in here which kind of keeps me from wanting to read more of his books. I've never read anything by him except for this book but I did enjoy it and I feel like for a holiday young adult read it's still worth a shot because there just aren't a lot of them and there are a lot of like bad ones <laughs> and this one isn't a bad one. It's just not like the greatest which I'll talk about some of those coming up here. So I also watched the movie for this which came out on Netflix which is one of the reasons I wanted to reread it just so things would be clearer in my mind. <laughs> They're not the same, like at all. If you love this book, you have to go into the movie, like just erase the title from your brain. Cause like the character names are the same and there's like one or two situations, but other than that, it's completely different. I personally didn't enjoy the movie, maybe cause I read the book, but I, I didn't have a strong attachment to this book. I just thought that the timing of the movie was really weird. Like I liked the actors, but the script and like the timing and there were like long pauses and it just, it wasn't as happy and fun as I want like my Christmas movies to be. So I didn't personally enjoy the movie, but I wound up giving this one 3.5 stars again upon rereading. Next up, I listened to Love and Lifts by Rachel Hawthorne, narrated by Tavia Gilbert or Tavia Gilbert. I listened to two of Rachel Hawthorne's books last year for Tis the Seasonathon or in 2018, and I really enjoyed them. These are just super short, quick, wintry slash holiday themed romances. The first one I listened to from her mode in was not my favorite just because of a certain trope that I don't enjoy with romance in general. I really liked the second one that I read, which I think was Sweet Dreams, and then this one, Love and Lifts. This is about a girl who goes to visit her aunt and stay in like her aunt's extra cabin for winter slash holiday season that she's off of school. I think they're, they're still in high school. And her brother winds up going there with his friends at the same time, and they kind of have to share this cabin and like intermingle. And it's just a really sweet romance and it was just really cute. There's like friendship and lovely romance and they're doing lots of fun wintry holiday themed activities, making hot cocoa and going skiing and all kinds of stuff like that. I think it's set on a ski resort, I think. And then her aunt's like a baker. I don't know. It was perfect for the holidays. Very cheesy, very lighthearted. Characters are very one-dimensional. This is only like a five-hour audiobook, so it's just something really quick and easy, but it's great for a readathon. So I wound up giving this one 3.5 stars. Next up, I listened to A Boy Called Chris. Christmas. This is by Matthew Haig, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and narrated by Stephen Fry. This is a middle grade Christmas story and it's basically like the origins of Santa Claus as a young boy and like how things came to be. But it is so magical and it's so detailed and it is everything I want for Christmas. I want magic, I want Santa, I want Christmas vibes, I want reindeer, I want the North Pole and all kinds of goodness and it was so beautiful. I loved it so much. This is part of a trilogy. I didn't get to the other two books because they weren't available on Overdrive in time, but I do plan on listening to them next year. Again, another short like five hour audiobook. I listened a little bit faster, so it takes me like three hours. I loved it. Stephen Fry did an amazing job narrating. He's a great narrator anyway. I really thought this was just so charming and it's one that I'm going to be purchasing because it's a new favorite. So I wound up giving this one four stars. Next up, I reread Dash and Lily's Book of Dares via audiobook by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. This one's narrated by Tara Sands and Ryan Giselle. So one chapter is from Lily's perspective and one chapter is from Dash's. This is basically about two kids that wind up kind of being home alone, kind of, for Christmas and doing a scavenger hunt via The Strand, which is a giant bookstore in New York that I got to go to and it was amazing. So it was fun to go out because I had read this before. I read this one two years ago again. And this is one of my all-time favorite Christmassy reads. It's so romantic. It's so Christmassy. It's so festive. It's perfect for book lovers because they're in a a bookstore like a lot of the time and there's like just a lot of friendship and things as well. One of my favorite like young adult contemporary romances. I didn't get to the second book to reread it this year. I have read it before. It's not my favorite but I kind of want to listen to it on audio and see if I do enjoy it but this one's definitely 
one of my all-time favorite Christmas reads. I was happy to reread it for the first time via audiobook. The narrators did a pretty good job. I especially like the guy narrator. I don't know if I've listened to him before, but I, I really enjoyed him. I think you would enjoy this one even if it's not Christmas time, but especially around the holiday season. So upon rereading, I gave four stars. Then I reread via audiobook. My True Love gave to me 12 holiday stories edited by Stephanie Perkins. A lot of these are by Holly Black, uh, Matt De La Pena, Gail Foreman, David Levithan, Lainey Taylor, Stephanie Perkins, and Kirsten White. And then they have various narrators. There's a different narrator for each story, so there's 12 narrators overall. Really love when they do that with anthologies because I listen to a couple anthologies where they just use one narrator and it's really jarring to hear the same narration but on a new story because you kind of start interconnecting the characters, especially when the stories are really short. These are all like Christmas slash even Hanukkah slash just holiday festive winter stories. I read this one physically for the first time in 2018 and then I reread it this 2019 for Christmas time and it's one of my all-time favorites. I know I've said that before but that's why I've been rereading them but this one especially some of these stories I plan on rereading or re-listening to every single year because I just love them so much. They would make amazing movies and they're so well done. There's, they have nice little character arcs and nice little finishes and they're all all very different from each other. There's literally one that's like fae oriented and very magical set in the past and it's poetically written. Holly Black's story in here is about Krampus who's like the evil devil guy that follows Santa around to punish children. That's cool. Some of them are about boys working on Christmas tree farms and it it's just so good and it's very, very different. Some are contemporary, they're set in different places, like they're not really similar at all. There are a few that I didn't like in here, like I don't love Matt De La Pena's story. There's one other one, but Lainey Taylor and Rainbow Rowell, Stephanie Perkins, Holly Black, so good. So I love these, the narrators were amazing. I will definitely, like I said, be rereading this like time and time again. This one I immediately went and purchased the first time that I read it because I loved it so much. It's such a quick read and it is a necessity for Christmas season. So five stars for this one as a whole. And the last book that I listened to was The Autobiography of Santa Claus by Jeff Gunn. I believe Jeff Gunn was the narrator for this one too. It's not really telling me on my Overdrive app, which is weird. This is one I've been meaning to get to for years. Well, like three or four years because I found a copy of the second book, which is called The Great Santa Search, and I didn't know this was part of a trilogy, and I read it first. It actually works fine as a standalone. I actually would recommend that, <laughs> but this is the first book in the series, and Jeff Gunn is telling this as if Santa Claus has told him about his life and all the information about how everything came to be and his journey and his friends and like all that kind of stuff. So the deal with this one, I actually loved The Great Santa Search. It was like a four-star read for me. These are adult stories but they're very appropriate. They're very appropriate. They're very fun. I didn't really love because it felt more like an autobiography, which props to Jeff Gunn. Like, it felt like a real autobiography. This was very historical fiction-esque, so there was a lot of true history things that happened in here, and so we're talking about different wars and different religious uh, situations with like the Catholic Church and all kinds of different things. There's a lot of stuff about Christianity in here and like how that came to be and what was happening with that, and so it wasn't quite as magical and whimsical as I wanted it to be. It was kind of more just like the history of the world told through Santa Claus's eyes, with some of his life experiences thrown in there. And it was some accurate things about Saint Nick himself, who Santa Claus is based on. And I love anything to do with Saint Nick and Santa Claus and all that kind of stuff. But this is one I probably won't ever read again. Like I'll keep it because I want the trilogies to all be together. This was just a little bit too historical for me. It came off just a little bit preachy, which is fine. I mean, I just wasn't expecting it to be like that because of the second book is literally about Santa like coming in being like a mall Santa and like <laughs> trying to stop them from do having mall Santas because he's the real Santa. And so this was just completely different from the second book. There is a third one in the series. I am very excited for that one because I think it's going to be more similar to the second book in like the style of the writing. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one unless you're like a die-hard Christmas Santa Claus fan and you just want to read everything about Santa and Christmas like I do, then definitely check this out. But 
the other ones that I talked about are much better. And the second and third one in this series, I don't feel like it's necessary at all to read this one. I mean, you miss out on how he kind of developed some of his friends, but it's not really a big deal. You could just read the Wikipedia <laughs> about it. So I wound up giving this one three stars. And that's it. Those are all of the books that I wound up reading for the month of December. I did pretty good on audiobook, not so good physically reading, but that's okay. We did a ton of fun Christmassy things. And I left a couple books like halfway finished that I am finishing now in January. So you'll see a little bit heavier January month because of that. I just didn't finish them in December. So yeah, those are all the things I read. I loved reading all these festive Christmassy reads. I didn't read a single like non-holiday read, which is kind of always my goal. I just kind of like doing that. So really fun, really enjoyed myself. Let me know if you guys read like festive holiday Christmassy type reads or if you kind of intermix them or if you hate them. And I will see you all next time on the bright side. Bye!